the difference between Trump and Biden in terms of their approach to the Pacific Islands really reflects the overall difference in their foreign policy. Trump's motto was America first. His administration didn't really pursue alliances, but talked quite openly about the need to maintain US hegemony. Now, Biden's foreign policy is uh, somewhat more sophisticated than Trump's, but he's seeking ultimately the same thing as Trump. He's seeking to, to consolidate and expand US hegemony, US imperialism, but he wants to do it in a more consensual way and he wants to build an alliance. The fact is that in recent decades, the imperialist powers have almost completely ignored the Pacific Island countries. They've been you know, left to try and overcome the legacy of a century of colonialism, a century of underdevelopment on their own. Many of these countries suffer terrible poverty, terrible inequality. Many of them struggle with high crime rates, with ethnic tensions. And, and these problems are largely a product of their colonial history. But the former colonizers don't apparently feel any sense of responsibility towards them. China, on the other hand, is a nearby major power that has never had a colonial relationship with these countries, but which is very willing to provide aid, trade and investment, that's very willing to help these countries to develop without compromising their sovereignty. This all makes sense for the Solomon Islands and for the other Pacific countries, but it's the opposite of what the US wants. As part of its strategy of China encirclement, and that's the reason for the, this kind of sudden flurry of diplomatic activity in the region. That's the reason for this forthcoming US Pacific Island Country Summit. That's the reason for the US, Australia, Japan and Britain forming this Partners in the Blue Pacific. These are imperialist powers that are doing everything they can to prevent normal and mutually beneficial relations between China and the Pacific Island countries. The reason being that they insist on the whole region being part of a US so-called sphere of influence in which the people of the region are just sort of humble pawns in the US's imperial chess game. What the summit represents is, as you've said, an example of the Cold War mentality. Why has the United States suddenly decided that it cares about its relationship with the islands of the Pacific. The reason is because those islands have increasingly good relations with China, because China has emerged as a major trading partner of those islands. China is the principal supplier of COVID-19 vaccines to these islands. China's uh, working very strongly with these countries around climate change issues, which are having a very heavy impact on the islands of the Pacific. And the United States, not wanting to see China having good relations with these countries, suddenly decides that it will have a conference, it will have a summit, and that it will try and essentially bribe these countries back into the US camp. The Biden administration is paying much more attention to the Pacific Islands because he wants to incorporate these countries into an anti-China alliance so that they can form another island chain you know, and, and used potentially to intimidate or to blockade China. And the bigger picture is that, you know, the US economy has essentially run out of steam. There's, there's, there's no question of the US matching the dynamism of the Chinese economy. China's become you know, by far the world leader in new energy, in telecommunications, in 5G, in nanotechnology and, and several other key areas. Average life expectancy in China has now overtaken that of the US. So increasingly, ordinary Chinese people are living longer and living better than their counterparts in the US. And the US sees this as a threat and it's responding to this threat with what I think we should agree is a very dangerous militarization and by resorting to Cold War strategies, block-based politics, division and decoupling. And this runs counter to the interests of the American people it runs counter to the interests of the Chinese people and it runs counter to the interests of the people of the world.